Happy Monday, everybody. Yo. Hello. It is January 25th, 2021. I'm going to start weird things here in a minute. Hell yeah. How's everybody doing? Oh, Good. man. What a weekend. What a, what a, what a weekend, man. Just, there was a weekend. Mm -hmm. Football was on. Yeah. Got a bunch done. Mm-hmm. Um, did you know, did I see right? Nice. Was, was there a headline that said like, "Guy stands to make a lot of money if he wins the Super Bowl again"? That's a dumb headline. I didn't like it well, because, it, like, yeah. as somebody who doesn't care about sports, I could have told you that whoever wins the Super Bowl will make a lot of money. <laughs> I didn't need a headline to say mm -hmm. this guy's going to make a lot of money if he wins the Super Bowl. Well, I, um, I think part of it is, uh, uh, the, the, the contract. So it's like, if your contract is okay, you'll take a little bit of money to play, but if you win the Super Bowl, we'll pay you a big old bonus. I think that, that that's usually where those stories come from. Was it unusual that this person who had won many Super Bowls before would be offered a lot of money if he would win a Super Bowl again? Well, having not read this article, I don't know who you're talking about, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it's I, Tom Brady, right? Yeah, it's Tom Brady, and he went like like the, the headline, and it was like for three days. The headline was, yeah. "If Tom Brady wins the Super Bowl, he'll make five hundred thousand dollars," and I'm like, that seems highly unremarkable at all. Like nothing about that is surprising. And then it was the top headline on my feed for like three days. Yeah, I, I mean. It, He's a very famous person, and people want to know how much famous people make. I guess that that's really the thing there. There there are some instances where people have a very incentive laden contracts, so you pay for you play for very uh, like a small amount of money. But if you stay healthy and play, you just keep racking up bonuses and bonuses. And then the ultimate would be if you win the Super Bowl, you get like a very large bonus. But yeah, Tom Brady's situation is not there. He he makes. A lot of money has made a lot of money and now will make more money if he wins the Super Bowl. Right? Like, like if anything, 500,000 sounded like a small number to me. I was like, it seems like he probably has made that many times over. But yeah. Uh, for, uh, sorry, I just found it in my cushions here, 500,000. For, for, for all the Super Bowls he's won in the past. Uh, uh, for reference, yeah. uh, his, his latest two-year contract that put him on the Buccaneers was worth $50 million. So. Which was very weird that I'm supposed to care about 500000 in a context where he's the guy that you don't makes all have the money. To. I don't know if they list that on Google News. <laughs> you don't have to care by law about all the stories. You can look at it and say, meh. That is, that is, uh, that's a They need a, a meh button. They need a meh button. Yeah, meh. Just Apple News meh. has that. Uh, you can swipe and say, eh, dislike. So, yeah, I don't like this news. I Thank curate you. my world now. Mm. I'm I'm in control. <laughs> Look at me, algorithm. I'm the captain now. God, I wish. I, I wish Google gave anything close to that. My my guess is that uh, as far as bonuses go, that is a high amount for a bonus, but not unexpected for a rec on almost record breaking uh, Super Bowl um, participant. Like for 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 a the megatron of football. Uh, yeah, seems uh, okay. It's all stats, right? It's just numbers. Like here's, no, it's it's all numbers. It's just anytime there's numbers you can report on. Man, that's gonna money. be a great. I love that we rebranded this show from <laughs> from news of the weird to sports and and gave it the the name. It's all numbers. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. We'll get started. It's here. all numbers with Bryce and the Brycettes. Oh, <laughs> talking sports about numbers mm -hmm. and sports numbers and sports yeah. all right are uh, you guys ready to do a show let's do it oh, ready ready okay also justin your politics tv is on i don't know if you want to keep that on or not do we want it on because it pops me a little bit more from the background but oh, i don't no, know it's fine. If it's... i like it yeah i just wasn't sure if you had it let's leave it on screw sure. it there we go all right then let's uh let's start the show here i'm gonna catch you in in three two oh Okay, we'll take a second. Take a second. Good call. Good call. The right call. Sometimes you got sometimes you have to get a sneeze out, folks. Folks. Get it out. You gotta get a sneeze out. Get it out. All right. <laughs> Ready to go? <clears throat> okay, here we go. In three, two. 
Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, that's me. I'm little, I'm tiny. In this <laughs> little Bryce. I'm tiny. Oh, little Bryce. Little Bryce is yeah. back, everybody. Experiment it's on me. Modern Rogue went awry. They shrunk Bryce. I need to make a bigger eye now. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen uh i actually what i want to talk about one is a couple little bits, bits of space news first there may be another test of the starship starship nine tonight so if you're listening to this tomorrow or so whenever you get this maybe it worked or maybe it'll happen this week so they're continuing to test this so that's going to be cool that's space spacex's starship their next generation fully reusable rocket and they're going to keep testing this which is kind of cool that keeps moving forward uh, they just launched yesterday their first big ride share with the Falcon 9, where they had something like 140 payloads and satellites on board that they were able to put into orbit, which is pretty incredible. So when I saw this headline, I totally just assumed 143 satellites being put into space. I just assumed all of them Starlink, but I guess now I'm finding out that's not the case at all. <laughs> Yeah, these are all like different customers, different people who have different payloads and satellites that they want to put up there. SpaceX had announced this pro project or program a while ago, which was, you know, you know, that whole part about us wanting to make space cheap and easy for anybody to launch stuff. Uh, that's apparently, uh, you know, one of the things it's that's happening. There are several. Yeah. And there are other, you know, there's Rocket Labs and other companies, too, that are working on really cool, like smaller rockets that can, you know, put stuff into orbit. You know, where you put like one or you know, just a few payloads here, 143 is pretty impressive. Until we find out what's uh, on board, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, how, it's all how, asbestos. How, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> drop asbestos into the atmosphere. How public is that information? Like like could 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 we theoretically let's say we uh, were I would imagine. Go ahead. Oh, I I, I was gonna ask like uh could we have an expectation of privacy to send up, let's say, uh, I don't know, a, a, just a, a, a ball filled with prismatic glass that refracts sunlight at a certain hour to look like a, a pair of diamonds or something. Like, could we get away with doing that without the whole world knowing what we're up to? I don't think SpaceX will let you. Um, I think that it depends. Like, you know, there's certain... You know, things that they're going to want to make sure that the payload isn't going to be problematic for them. Um, but here, like, yeah. they was 48 Earth imaging satellites from uh, Planet, uh, a company, uh, 17 communication satellites for Toronto based Kepler, and 30 small satellites are US and Europe, packaged by Berlin, Germany based Exo Launch. So they worked with another company, Exo Launch. So I would imagine, I know I want to put a bunch of things that are going to have this. There probably are provisions to say, like, uh, no. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, be yeah, the ones yeah. That get the we 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 we'd have to go through like cheapo Ed's uh, uh, uh super rapid budget satellite launch. You know, we got to go through a dicier uh, vendor on that one. SpaceX is like the uh, they're 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 the top of the top of the pops. Uh, hey, if, can can we can we pause for a moment, Andrew? I th I think your connection started um dropping out on us a little bit. Um, I don't know if you're able to check that. Um, or maybe is he still here? Uh, oh. Whoa! No? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> that was no, he's magical. <laughs> he's probably gonna go to reset his cue. router. Uh, that was a great trick. Oh my goodness! Wow! That's yeah. awesome. Oh my god! And it, now I'm just imagining someone who like you know like data moshing, like doing that, but with a router. So like holding a magnet right by your router for the right place, so you buffer just like that, and then you move it, and then you're gone. Oh wow! <laughs> I think that would be fun. I don't think that's how magnets work. <laughs> so I don't think, yeah, out, I but... think that would be, man. All right. Hey, Andrew, can you talk for us? Yeah, I, I'm i at a loss because I got the late, the fiber optic connection here, but I don't, I guess it just. I don't know. It's all numbers, man. It's all numbers. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll bring you back. So Justin was talking about uh, 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 Cheapo, the Cheapo. Yeah. Uh, competitors for the space. Yeah, well, Brian. Yeah, we're yeah we we 
cheap. We need we need cheapo Ed's satellite launch. Uh, SpaceX is too classy we for need, us. We need those guys that launched a disco ball into space and made a bunch of astronauts angry, uh, or astrophysicists or something. I don't even know if that yeah. disco ball ever went up or not. Uh, I don't I know. It did I think that may have been Rock? Was that Rocket Labs who did that? Yeah, um, yeah Rocket down, Lab who used south. the Electron Booster from New Zealand. Yeah, Kiwis. Yeah, uh, that was the Humanity Star, gentlemen. It was the Humanity Star. Okay, so not a disco ball. The Humanity Star. No. The Humanity Star, right? Oh, I, I'm sorry. Are you against humanity or stars? I mean, yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just mad it's it. going to take so long until I could see it in North America. Well, it's already re-entered and burned up, so. <sighs> Even mm. longer. Even longer. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, it's, it in my maybe it's in your, maybe, maybe it's in your lungs right now, Brian. Yeah. You are the so, humanity star. Uh, but it is, it is very much an exciting point to be in space because we have multiple launch providers now and, and internationally too you know india has india had the record previously for the largest number of payloads launched which is 104 there are a lot of these not a lot but there are a number of like imaging companies that are like putting up these small satellites or doing earth imaging which is just a very 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 useful for things like agriculture etc uh urban density a lot of applications there so it's kind of a cool it's it's start thinking folks about what you want to put into space what kind of data do you want? What kind of materials research do you want to do? And we haven't even really started doing much of that. Like, you know, sending satellites up to try to make things. I, I suppose at this point, like, I'd be more curious, like, what, what hasn't already been figured out? I mean, what can you do? Take temperatures, uh, look at infrared lights, measure light, uh, uh, send a signal, bounce a signal, internet. I think I don't know, man. I, I I think there's a wealth. Like we're we're literally. It's like like what what can you do with the open water? What 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 can you do with new land? Like you know, there's 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 an infinite possibility when you make it cheap enough to interact with it. Yeah, I mean, a hypothetical could be you know, let's say you're a company, you want to provide data for companies that want to figure out where to do expansions. You could put satellites up. You could build imaging systems that could keep trap track of traffic flows you know put a you know 50 60 satellites up that constantly monitor look at urban areas and stuff and see like wow how many people really are in this place how many people are here you know what cars are moving from from here to here what's energy usage you know you could go look and see in developing worlds like oh are there energy consumptions going up or down you know do we want to plant you know is this a place where we want to you know consider investing in there's so much in the imaging side alone I know people who are working on stuff on forestry projects, agriculture, uh, oceans projects, things like this, tracking like blooms, things like this, et cetera. And you just get into anything that you would want information about that could, you know, what could you know, but you could see from space. You know, one of my favorite stories about Sam Walton was the way Sam Walton would build Walmarts was he would go rent an airplane and go up in a little small airplane and fly around an area and look for the sky to find like that best spot. And he would sometimes like even land in a farmer's field and go make a deal with them right then and there to option the land to build a Walmart. Also, strangely enough, opening segment to Gleaming the Cube, where they would get up in a plane, look around for empty pools to skateboard in. Oh God, I totally forgot about that. Right? But yeah. imagine, imagine that, but with Walmarts. Well, wouldn't he also, uh, uh, Sam Waltman would land in your parking lot if it wasn't busy at, at a Walmart and come figure out why your Walmart wasn't busy enough? I could see it. Uh, I forget well, Brian, where I read just, that. <clears throat> but that point you brought up from Gleaming the Cube uh, is, is if you're, let's say, you're trying to figure out like, oh, do I want to invest in a real estate market? There's data that's available. There's data that's not. And let's say... You're like, man, a lot of these pools are empty. I think these people have these homes, but nobody's living there. Or are there, you know, there are no cars in these driveways. And all of a sudden you could decide like, oh, I think this real estate market might be cooling down. And there are a lot of little things like that. Just you think about a business or sector and you can start figuring out, you know, ways in which that data could be useful. You know, if you're a farmer, um, you might want to know, and you're part of a farm, a large farm company or industry is like, Hey, how many cattle do my competitors have? You know, what do they have going on? Well, you know, how much equipment? 
I, I, I think you showed a spotlight on a blind spot for me, which was like, it's tempting to think, yeah, there's lots of cameras up in the sky. Why would you want to launch more cameras? And the answer, of course, is so you don't have to rent other people's cameras because time slices can be very expensive. Or maybe the government doesn't want to loan you your their camera to look at this particular area for this self-serving need or whatever. Uh, one thing that's great about having your own camera, you can point it wherever you want, whenever you want, however long you want. Exactly. And that's the thing is it like... Uh, it's just, you know, the earth is big. Earth is big. And when you want to get like, you heard it here first, people. Facts, folks. Facts. Uh, when you want to look at, if you're just trying to spot the number of construct pieces of construction equipment in China, you know, you might, you know, you're going to want to use a certain number of dedicated satellites to be able to do that or keep track of that. So, and that's just the earth imaging side. We're eventually going to get into like materials development, things like this, you know. You know, sending up machines that sort of like build things like fiber optics, do chemical experiments. We've done this to a little extent, but there are, when you're in microgravity, you know, when you're in weightlessness, physics and chemistry function differently. Well, I mean, physics is the same everywhere, but the idea of like not having the ablative effects of things being flattened out, whatever, structures, proteins, things like this, they loosen up and change. There's a lot of things we've observed in like the space station as far as like how bacteria behave, even people's health. We don't know. We don't know because it's just we didn't evolve in a we didn't evolve in a weightless environment. So that'll be exciting. Start planning your science fair projects, kids. Mm -hmm. Uh and along with your planning for your science fair projects, you should plan to financially support us. Yeah, at pay patreon.com. Pay the science weird fair. F A R E. It's only fair to us if you pay us the science fair, which is the ticket cost to experience science. Be the fairing on our rocket to science, because you will support us at patreon.com slash weird thing. So, gentlemen, I would like to ask you your opinions right now about Oculus Quest 2. Both of you have an interesting experience because you've, you've, you're not VR newbies. You are Vive owners. You've worked in, you've done in six degrees of freedom. You've been using that for years. You have a lot of experience with that. And going down to the Quest is a bit of a downgrade from a graphics point of view. And that's why a lot of people who are using tethered systems, you know, were hesitant because it's like, I got the state of the art, much more visual, much more powerful engine driving my VR thing. Why would I want to use this? And I was to always try to equate that. Like, it's kind of like saying I got a desktop. Why would I want to use a phone or a mobile laptop? And I'm like, there's a difference, but I want to hear your thoughts. Well, the, the biggest thing, and it's not just me and Justin, but also Bryce as well. The three of us together have in common that, Andrew Maine has refused to friend any of us on Oculus. No, hold on. I no, I have to. I I finally got a friend request oh. from Andrew Maine. Oh, Brian, maybe you should check. Oh, oh, maybe Andrew hadn't been on his in a week, and then mm. realized there was a friend request. Oh, okay, and okay. maybe you got friended last night. Oh, oh. Uh, maybe Bryce doesn't oh, have one. Oh my God! Yeah, maybe Bryce this never is, sent these me are the one. kinds of twists and turns that you would subscribe to this podcast <laughs> for. Mm -hmm. Dang it! Dun dun dun! Uh, no, I look, I'm, I'm, I am out front. I think that the quest two is a game changer. Um, I, I don't know if it's the iPhone or the sidekick, but both of those to me were quantum leaps beyond what, uh, cell phone technology was prior to that. They 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 had direct purposes. They did things that were beyond the scope of uh you know what had been imagined before. And uh look, the the Vive to me is a curated extension of PC gaming. And that's why oftentimes when you had frustrations, it was because PC games are known to be big and expansive they often are the best ways that you can run triple a titles and so vr in its infancy with the vive was at times frustrating because the games were short and yes they looked great and and the and, and the graphics were fantastic 
But what Oculus Quest 2 does is just bring you strap it on and go functionality that it just can't be beat. Like the 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 fact that you don't got to worry about booting up Steam and then booting up a game and hoping all that works and hoping your lighthouses are still uh in in the right place and hasn't gotten nudged uh, uh that everything's charged like the the only thing that needs to be charged is your headset. So as long as you remember to put that on a charger, then you are ready to go whenever you want. And uh, uh, I have had a blast, blast with it so far. Uh, it, it is truly remarkable how suddenly you feel like you're in the same room with people when you put this on. However, um, there is a bit of an uncanny valley because it almost does the thing that, that on this very show we have uh, wished for. We, we rubbed the, the lantern. We wished to the genie. We said, how much fun would it be to have an AR VR experience where you could just strap on a helmet, go run it around Zilker Park, and, 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 and not worry about running into anything, but be in a medieval wonderscape or whatever. And man... For, for a hot second, did it feel that way? Because I was outside, I was playing putt-putt on an actual lawn outdoors with the Wi-Fi and everything. And then, uh, then the sun came out. And once the sun came out, man, the Quest 2 really would appreciate it if you had a little thing called walls. It's like, uh, man, I'm doing my best here. <laughs> but it looks like there's this, you know, uh, 4,000 Kelvin bright light in the room and it's blinding me. And also... Could you please have some walls here? Because I don't exactly have GPS tracking here. Uh, but 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 that's me just wanting to wish for the the next and, iteration. That's, that, that's that's Brian immediately running to the edge of the product's uh, of abilities and hitting a wall. <laughs> yes, yes, a hundred percent. I would have. I'm I'm gonna fifty percent go, Brian. You're being ridiculous. This is a thing. It's not supposed to really be doing this. The other part of me, like a couple years from now we're going to be like, you know what? It really sucks. Can't use it outside. I want to go be able to play the next gen, you know, things. We're going to be like, what? You have to use it indoors. It's, and, it's a and, baby and it almost does it because like uh, you draw the barriers and when you get to the ed barriers, it gives a, a pretty good AR experience where everything goes grayscale. You're able to essentially have stereoscopic vision, like with your eyes, like, um, uh, um, uh, uh, like as you raise your hands, you could check the, the time on your watch or whatever, but then you take like five more steps and you could tell like at some point Facebook's lawyers got involved and they're all like, Hey, 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 at some point we have to make it clear that this is not a device that's meant to be worn at all times with a full freedom of movement in the outside world. So it then is, all of a sudden not, it just yeah, turns that, off to that's black. Not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, it literally has to do with the IR sensors in the light. They're the, it, it, it's, it's not a, the trying to make it not work outside. It's literally a limitation of IR. In some oh, no, no, no. It, but, but uh, so, so what happens is, is you define your play area. And then when you get to the edge, you get a, a grid. And if you keep oh, going yeah. beyond, then it goes to, okay, just turn on the cameras, turn on the cameras that are on the front of the headset of it. And you get to walk around with the intention of like, please walk back to the play area. But if you keep walking outside of it, it very much decides like, okay, I don't know what you're doing, but well, it's not what we want you to do with this device. Well, well, Shut I, it off. <laughs> yeah, but look up stadium mode. That's a dev mode. They actually are a version of stadium mode, which is designed to eventually allow you to test it. Because right now the games and stuff are designed for limited play spaces, but they do have a thing that's called stadium mode. You can unlock that, which allows you to go much more free, like inside of a basketball court or whatever. Ah, all right. Cool. Well, I'll check that out. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, uh, so far, so good. Uh, uh, the, 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 the graphics are, well, I mean, again, it's like, you know, the Game Boy's graphics wasn't as good as, you know, Super Nintendo, but it didn't make the Game Boy any less of an amazing device. Like it, Or the Wii, you know, like 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 uh, the Wii added motion control in the sense of, you know, like, oh, look at me, I'm pretending yeah, bowling. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I, guess I, I just think there is something to the freedom of this that is really remarkable. Like, I had the same experience 
with that device in a hotel room in Atlanta, in two hotel rooms in Oakland while I was quarantining, and in two different rooms in my house. Like, that is amazing for VR. When, when VR, the way that, like, I, I had initially thought of it was make sure that three different things are charged and then have two different points of failure on my PC, right? If everything worked, great, right? Like, I still haven't played through Half-Life Alex. I'm sure it's amazing. But, uh, man, was it really great to play Pistol Whip and Trover Saves the Universe and, and uh, uh, Dash Dash, uh, uh, their, their, you know, uh, go-kart game, and then Putt-Putt, like, all over the place. I played it by myself. I played it with friends. Like, like it is still dependent on internet. I'll be curious to see if they get to a place where you're just getting a 5G plan and now you're totally, uh, you know, uh, possibly separated from Wi-Fi and stuff. But other than that, if you've got decent internet, you can uh, download and do multiplayer. And otherwise, it is, uh, uh, you know, separate from the internet because if it's downloaded to the headset, you're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, uh, the the gaming content on there, um, it, it's amazing what they've done. Like Pistol Whip's a great game where the graphics, they said, okay, we're not going to do like super realistic graphics, but we're going to use a stylized kind of, you know, John Wick comic book style graphics. It's a great game. Like Pistol Whip's just a great It's so game. fun. And- I, 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 I actually just need more space because I both in the hotel rooms and – in in my studio if i'm not playing out in my living room uh as you get to some of the better levels the, it gets a little bit more kind of like getting you know going through tight spaces and ducking under columns and everything and i was i was hitting my uh hitting my barrier too much but okay, it's so, so questions good. so people, fun people are asking uh fatigue like how long have you played before you start to notice it or get you know the with the headset on uh i i have not yet bumped up against any any upper bound i mean if anything uh the the closest thing i could think of is is like on on the the vive uh because there's so much heft to it and because eventually batteries go out or whatever like half-life alex and you're playing like six hours at a time yeah yeah uh yeah you'll you'll get bummed out at some point but but it's it's a it's a pretty light and light experience. I could I could imagine going six seven hours without even thinking. If you get a chance, if you don't already have, uh, get the uh, the bigger band out of the pro band or head strap, which is great. So you got the dial and adjust whatever. It's like fifty bucks. Um, makes it even easier to put on. Yeah, oh, cool. I have I have noticed that uh, now that I have longer hair, the fact that everything is straps, it's like. The hair wants to slide forward, which is a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. Um, you know, it's like base model Quest now is 300, which is, you think of what you're getting is amazing. And then you can add this. People are like, oh, it's 50 bucks extra from this. Like the Quest used to be 400. So now, yeah. you know, you could, you, you for 350, you get a bigger, better, you know, a, you know lighter, whatever, capable thing. Uh, I have back there, I have the Anchor charger, which is a charging station. And it comes with like this little, uh USB C thing that you plug into the side here, which is a little magnetic thing. So all I have to do is just drop this in and it'll automatically charge. I don't have to fiddle or plug anything in. And they give you rechargeable batteries, the remotes, and a special battery ca- a case cover. So you just drop your hand your your uh your controllers in there and it just charges. And this is just uh super convenient because now um boom you know, you drop it in and it's charging. And that was like 80 bucks or something. So uh, I'm buying I this did. pro strap right now. Yeah, I, I, rec- I recommend it if you have the means. Um, I played last night with you guys. How much do you know about Facebook Horizon? Nothing. Not a whole lot. I think I know why now. Um, so Facebook has been launching, they announced this well over a year ago, Facebook Horizon, which was going to be their big VR world that you could go play and interact and do different kinds of stuff. A lot like Rec Room, a lot like Rec Room. In Rec Room, if you haven't checked out, Rec Room's really neat, a neat place where you can go make your own experiences in there. Um, 
I have have a I have a friend that's like gone crazy. You can go to Rec Room and design your own interactive games inside VR, and you have this controller with like, if this does this, you literally draw have a cable go from here to there. So if you step here, this door opens, or and this stuff. So Facebook has built their system called Horizon, which is environment where you can go in there and you can play games and do stuff with people. Uh, I went in there last night. Um, I finally got an invite to go try it. And uh, I was done in 15 minutes. Um, oh, really? Not. It's. I'm sure there are great experiences stuff in there. But if you go in there by yourself and you're not part of a group and you're not eager to, you know, team up with a bunch of randos, uh, I don't know what to do. I, like, there's like this menu of things you could do and like i have no idea what i should go do i have no idea what each kind of thing is i felt i felt like it was a bit half-baked the graphics they use is super kind of low poly style which is almost a little bit too low poly for me i'm sure there are probably awesome experiences in there but i went in there you you, you launch you come to the sort of landing port and you're there and then you can walk around and there are just people randomly chatting and then there's like oh you can go pull up a menu and see these experiences. There's not a lot of information on what each one of these things are. And I went to do this wild west puzzle thing and I go in there and I'm like, okay, I got a thing. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> and like, um, uh, okay, now what? Um, and they've been working this out for over a year. And I wonder, is it just, is it just, is it because they're not a game studio? I, I think so. I, I think, when I even watched the demo there, it felt like something that they didn't know what they wanted to do. Because none of the stuff looked fun. None of the stuff looked really fun. Like, make fake ramen with your friends. If you gave me a, a, a free thing that me and my wife would go on a date night to make ramen, I would I'd be like, eh, okay. Well, maybe <laughs> I hope it'll be fun. Right. And not just a thing we could do at home. Uh, obviously there are, there are elements like, you know, like the, the walkabout putt putt game is like the thing that I spent the most time playing. So there mm -hmm. are, there are physics things that can be good, but it, it wasn't like, Oh, this is the kind of thing that I want to engage with my friends. Uh, about I want to talk about like I, I don't know as as somebody who has spent you know a a portion of his uh life as a professional game designer uh it did not seem like a game that I thought was immediately screamed fun and interesting yeah O'Brien oh I I was just gonna throw out that like I I I, I would say maybe seven percent of all the time I've spent on the quest to has been alone time, uh, and and I hated every minute of it. It's like, well, why am I even here? A browser uh, for a giant screen? How about I take this off and open up my real life giant screen browser? Or it's like um, playing with randos? No thanks, because I know what the internet is filled with. It's weirdos, you know. So it's like, uh, like as it's my experience has been. Imagine the best conference call you've been on. And you happen to be playing putt putt at the same time. That's yeah. that's a, that's this experience at its best. Yeah, walk about golf. That it is like the best experiences I think, like on the Oculus, that really showcase what VR can do from a physics. Like, I mean, if you're not doing social stuff, like Beat Saber is amazing. Beat Saber is amazing, and and it works best in VR. Pistol Whip is a VR game. You would, I couldn't imagine. It's not going to be, it wouldn't be a fun game if we're on your iPhone. And then Walkabout Golf is just this, I remember when they first got, I'm like, oh, let me, when I first got the quest, I'm like, oh, let me look for some cool, like, putt-putt golf thing. And there was some garbage one that wasn't good, and there was another golf one that, like, was like a golf train. Like, these suck. And then Walkabout came, and I'm like, it's what I always wanted. It's what I dreamed of. And it's not. And then, at first, you just played by yourself, and then they had multi-user mode, and then yeah, chilling out with friends and playing that is just, yeah, that's a great social VR. Here's here's the thing that scares me about Facebook Horizon that they don't even realize how scary this is. When you when you get it, you have your your controls on your wrist and you turn your wrist over, and there are three buttons. There's a menu button you can tap to have a menu. 
there's the microphone button, which is default on, so people can hear you and chat with you, which, by the way, even if you close the game, it will work because that microphone thing works throughout Quest because oh, it's Facebook yeah, and it's yeah. social, so you have to remember to mute yourself. Then the third button is the safe space, which then puts this wall and basically, like, nobody can talk to you or whatever, and you're in a safe space, which, like, if you... If you have to have a, and you put it that way, like, oh, and here's your safe space button, like, for the love of God, why are you even calling it that? Because now I'm like, well, am I, are you throwing me into a, like, a bunch of perverts? Like, am I being thrown yeah. into a prison rec rod? Like, why? You could have another way to do it, but the fact, like, and your safe space button, I'm like, oh, geez, like, this is just, is this experience going to be that scary and that bad? Yeah, that's weird. I don't like that at all. And, and also it's like, it's just, if you're just mixing people together to mix people together, then you're doing a tech demo. You're basically just proving that you can have there be a multiplayer thing and you're candy coating it. Uh, if you're not binding people together for a cause that people can rally around and bring something else out of them and, and brings joy brings excitement brings fun brings adrenaline whatever then what's the point what are you even doing like like i i totally agree if you've got to build something where default along with your microphone you have a safe space thing then you're then you 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 might not have designed a great thing yeah, they do they do a great job of making it easy to see who your friends are, you know, who you can connect with and do that. They do a very, very good job of that. Like you log in there and you can see like, oh, these are uh excuse me, it's the safe zone. It's the zone, not a space. Totally different. Uh and so the, the It's called a is panic like, area, not a panic room. Totally different. Yeah. And it's it's like and I get like I think that in building a system like this, you want to have mechanisms for monitoring, you know, abusive behavior, people who are weird and whatever. I think all those things are necessary to an extent. But when it's so put to the surface by default, like, oh yeah, here's the button when the perverts start talking to you. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like here's your rape whistle. Well, here, welcome to our shopping mall. Hope you enjoy. Here's your rape whistle. Here's your mace. Yeah. See, um, to me, it's like. I, if they had stuff like that, but it was some maybe an automated version of like uh, uh, some kind of quiz or like a, a, a spelling bee, a geography con, some thing where you were just connecting with people on, on some kind of level that you were able to interact with. And then you could have a conversation if you want. You and your friends could join a pub quiz kind of thing, like something like that. Like that could be fun, a, a, a super enhanced version of that. Um, I, yeah, I think, I think, I mean, we're going to get to there. I think, I think it's some, either them or somewhere. I think we'll get to the point where we could do, cause I was playing like, oh, it'd be fun to do. Like we could do weird, we could all host weird things now inside of VR, you know, that'd be yeah. sort of a fun thing. Um, cause you could create cool visual elements and not just make it where we're using crappy microphones to do a podcast. But the way they did the rollout is interesting because it's not like, Hey, Andrew, here's your invite. Now you can invite a few of your friends. Because then it would be easier for me to do, oh, cool. Hey, Justin, Brian, you know, let's go play this. Bryce never sent me an invite, so to heck with him. Um, we could, it'd be a lot easier to do that. I don't know. I wonder if it's just technical, I'm buggy, if they're having issues or whatever. Because it's just, for something that's been this long in the making, I was like, underwhelmed. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, feels like. Does, a lot does of cooks in the kitchen making say fake a ramen. little something that like I've 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 heard uh, bug all about any of this like like this is the first time hearing about it. Public beta started in August. Wow, wow, and they were testing it in the year before, so it's been around for a while. And I think that it's amazing that a company the size of Facebook has taken this long, and even still, they're not even you know it's 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 even like on the box i think for your oculus i even think they yeah. mentioned horizon on I think there they do. But... yeah yeah you know i'm curious to see what happens with facebook and oculus because uh it this is a hit 
This is a hit device. Everybody that I know that gets it loves it. Um, it is it is democratized VR the way that we had kind of hoped. I wonder whether or not they are going to be the ones that really break it super wide open. And that's why, to me, I don't know if it's the iPhone or the sidekick. I know that I loved my sidekick. I adored my sidekick because it was a quantum leap forward in terms of a phone. But it wasn't I'll, the iPhone. The iPhone, the another, iPhone, yeah, the iPhone was, 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 was a far more polished thing. Go ahead. Blackberry. Yeah. Because the, the sidekick was cool, but it was a Blackberry for the rest of us, where this is like, hey, this is really cool. Look what I can do. I'm doing email. I'm doing all the stuff. I'm remote. I'm, I'm doing all these things. And it was a technological leap. But once somebody solved the other such problems around it, you know, um, cause it was sidekick was never a major force. Oculus is the only name in mobile VR right now. Uh, oh yeah, totally. You know, it's like, they look like, Hey, they got everything. And that's like Blackberry looked like, Oh yeah, they got everything. Now, what could displace a Blackberry? And it's like, well, you know, a really good. Yeah. I know, guess the only question is exactly how big that pie is. And, and, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And we'll see, you know, the, the rumors, another round of rumors that Apple is, is, uh, you know, that, that, that their, their focus is, is on a super lightweight headset that'll, that'll cost uh, much more than, uh, the Oculus Quest 2's like $300 price point. So, um, we will, uh, we, we will see, but having watched the Oculus Quest or having played with the Oculus Quest V2, uh, or VR2 and loved it, it, I, I, you know, it was like, oh no, this is the step that Apple normally comes in. It's at this level that Apple's like, all the polish, all the power, triple the cost. Let's go. Yeah, I think the 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 big part of it too is that we want we want the metaverse. You know, we want that big that environment. And I think that the problem is is that the in you know Neil Stevenson books like nobody really controls it it's the internet in 3d and i think that until we really start embracing browser-based vr more fully which you can do that there's like you know i've made experiences and stuff and in, in browser stuff and i can't get anybody i know who's a vr headset to ever try it because people rarely in vr ever go into the browser and do stuff because it's a subpar experience but i think that's i think that's a huge opportunity is to create you know open platform whatever sort of worlds and systems so Gentlemen, do you want to do picks? Yeah, man. I uh, started watching Dave last night on uh, Hulu, question mark, I think. Um, I think it's Hulu. But uh, uh, The Adventures of uh, Lil Dicky. Uh, it's it's fun. It's funny. It's adult. It's body. It's awful. It's awkward. It reminded me a lot of um, uh, the things I liked about Atlanta, uh, only whiter. Uh, <laughs> and so in that regard, highly recommended two episodes in so far, really digging it. Cool. Um, I'm going to pick heaven's gate, the cult of cults on HBO mm -hmm. max four episode, uh, documentary about, uh, and, and I think it's, it's really well done. I, 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 I was hesitant to kind of dive into this because post, Nixium, uh, I was I was kind of uh, frustrated. I, I think once you watch all of the secret or the vow, whatever it was called, like uh, I, I was just kind of done being explained how sociopaths can affect people. It was just like, okay, all right, and maybe I'm also just burnt out with politics, but. Uh, this is something that is truly, truly fascinating. It's the largest uh, suicide, mass suicide on U.S. soil to this day. Um, and it's one in, in that it, it's unique in, in terms of a lot of cult stuff and that it is literally sexless. It has its own beliefs. Certainly you have a lot of these controlling, domineering forces, but also a lot of great, great ex member interviews and people and family member interviews that are are all about getting the nuance of 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 what was happening there 
and even what their opinions are now, which I found uh, very interesting. It's, I really, I enjoyed it too. I really thought it was, you can do a really good story when you try to get away from the BS and the reenactments and trying to manufacture a point of view that didn't exist, like happened in the Nexium one, which really drove me nuts and made me distrust the storytelling, you know, significantly. Yeah. Um, because it was like, well, if this isn't the way it happened, what else, whatever. And not that I think Rainier is a good guy at all, but when you're watching how far people go to shift a narrative and to create heroes and whatnot, it's like, mm. uh, I enjoyed this too. My one caveat would say, and it's not really a crit, but more of having been involved in the skeptic community at the time of Heaven's Gate and the whole hell bop uh, comet, like, you know, hysteria and everything else like this. I would love to have seen a bit more like that because the, we forget the mid nineties were some crazy times with yeah. millennium cults, all this other stuff, because it felt like this, they're showing this sort of an isolation. And I'm like, there's a lot of this going on. Like nineties, mid nineties was like the decade of the cult, you know, the branch Davidians well, and, and all that. Whether it's just sort of a vague um, anxiety of coming up on a new millennium, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, the cash in of that with like the Lynn Lance Erickson, uh, uh, Fox series millennium, this sort of like vague end of days, uh, end of days was a Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, uh, uh, coming out, uh, like a, a, on top of that, you had the quote unquote real threat of Y2K bug. Like, like there, there was a scientific, no matter what flavor a belief system you subscribe to, there was a track for you to feel anxiety as we got close to the year 2000. And we had the internet for everybody to talk about it. And that was how we knew about yeah. you know, the Heaven's Gate, their cult, their website. You could, their website's still up, by the way. Yep. And that was the thing is you could go there and that was a sort of like all these message forums and all the stuff just would exploded because now anybody who was, you know, the slightly off kilter sort of question or idea about stuff you know, could go there, could, you know, you could, you could find each other. So, uh, but yeah, I think it, I think it was, it was yeah, absolutely very well done, you know, documentary, but I would love to see more on that, which we just, it's memory to, hold. We just forget how nutty we were. To your point, Andrew, I think that there is a whole nother documentary about, you know, starting at, at Ruby Ridge and ending at, you know, uh, the, the, the end of the millennium with, uh, I mean, you know, Waco. Starting in Waco. Yeah. W well, no, Waco was, Ru was no, before Ruby. Ruby. I thought, I thought, Ruby, oh, was it? Yeah. I thought it was, thought uh, Waco was, I was in high school. Ruby Ridge, uh, was in Montana and, and I feel like I was okay. in college. Then, and yeah. Then, then, and then, then starting and then in... along with that, yeah, dr uh, sprinkle a little Oklahoma city bombing in there. Well, yeah, then, no, that, yeah, that's, uh, uh, the Waco siege was, February 93, Ruby Ridge was Which 92. was a year before. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I thought I remembered, uh, yeah, that the, the Ruby Ridge thing was before. Anyway, um, In but, but yeah, I think that, that there is a period of us coming together online. This was really the beginning of 24-hour news. This was the beginning of the internet. This was the anxiety of the millennium. This was the fact that, like, we had a a government that was intervening that that made in in these kinds of ways that were that you know uh, I think demonstrably made things worse than better. Uh, uh, there there's 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 a there's a big human story to this uh, that that you I know, think is is worth telling. And it is, and part of like in the Ruby Ridge thing with Randy Weaver, part of it allegedly. The reason the FBI was after him was because they wanted him to be an informant against white supremacist groups. Yeah. And and that was why it was there is a lot, you know, uh, mistakes were made. People died horrible and, and across the board on many of these things and how you deal with these groups and whatnot. And it's changed some of the tactics, but that's part of it, too. It's like when you say we need to go after blank, whatever we need to do is justified. We always got to be careful about and, what that and happens. that's. Yeah, the more you read about, there was a great Slate podcast series that that went into it, and and that's where I got a lot of my information. But uh, it's a it it's one of those like, okay, like just small time, lowest rung of 
like federal surveillance kind of stuff that just it it was not this but it felt like you know a a a a, a library book that wasn't returned and may have not even might have even been a clerical error leads to somebody getting the death penalty like like it was it was like just one step on another on another on another on another on another on another and nobody backs down and then next thing you know this guy and his and his family are are surrounded by fbi agents and they're recruiting uh, what was it paul harvey to do like a special broadcast to tell them to come out and like it's insane and you know, you had if you ever if you ever really want to go do a deep dive too, like read like the congressional report like on Waco too, because it was like bureaucratic bureaucratic mistake compounding. But also, one of the things that, that didn't get much attention was um, the plan was different. The plan was basically to get you know crash outside, arrest them, whatever. But uh, there was a period uh, in the interest of openness, the, the government had worked with, had told the local news agency, we're going to be doing this arrest. We want you to, you guys can be there, just stay at a distance, whatever, because the idea was they wanted to do this out in the open. And a, was a postal worker come by and saw this news truck or whatever, like, oh, what's going on? And they're like, oh, we're going to go, arre- they're going to go do an arrest of David Koresh. Oh, really? The postal worker was a friend of the Branch Davidians in the tip off. And, but then, Government knew that it had been leaked, and they still did it. Yeah. Went in, and that was a mistake. But it was part of it. But then after that was the policy that changed after. Like, no more telling news crews, no more telling the news or letting the news come in on these things. And it's sort of, you know, we got rid of an important part of kind of oversight or make you know having a third party there for some of these stuff. And it's like, and that's one of these things that I don't know if that ever fully got reversed at like at a, at a federal level, you know? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I think I think there's there's a lot there's there are times yeah. where I look at our modern world and I I see some of uh, uh, you know the those those 90s lessons that we learned or should have <laughs> the right way yeah yeah so anybody got any happy picks <laughs> uh, I got a pick uh, just the other night I was on HBO Max and looking up seeing what stuff that they had and uh they have uh frisky dingo if you guys remember that that's oh uh, yeah uh the adult swim cartoon from adam reed and uh, uh matt thompson this who was between went on to make what, archer uh, c lab and archer that's right yeah uh the two seasons it's cool it's it's very funny in in terms of like you look at especially the first couple seasons of archer and go okay i could see that this is like a very uh, price efficient animation budget, and then you look at Frisky Dingo and go, "Oh damn, there!" <laughs> yeah, some Turns cheap out stuff. you could spend even less money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the cutout lips moving like they used to do in the super cheap like Mexican animation. You know, well, let's yeah. go over to the library. <laughs> yeah, and just like you know, you can tell like it's kind of got that sort of illustrated style that Archer sort of has, but it's still not consistent, and they haven't really totally figured it out at that point. Um, but you know what? It's a fun little thing, and it's a lot of that same uh, sensibility and style of humor as Archer. So, uh, Frisky Dingo, it's on HBO Max. A bunch of a bunch I, of Adult Swim stuff is on HBO Max, but not everything. I forget the character, but there was one character in Frisky Dingo who was like a spoiled rich guy or whatever. Xander and, Cruz. The uh, name. Uh, he he picks up the phone and just said, "Go time." And, uh, and for like a year afterward, that was how I answered the phone from then on. <laughs> yeah. Andrew. I have a pick. Um, first, I want to say that I am going to double. I'm going to triple down on the third episode of WandaVision. Ooh. Um, um, I'm uh, I'm I'm all in. I'm all in. Yeah. And 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 that, the, the the third episode made me like the first episode better. Can, can I can I confess something? Like the third episode I watched, and then the next day I was like, well, surely more stuff happened than. Uh, spoiler alert. She had a baby, so I went back and watched it a second time, and it's like, nope, she just had a baby, and everyone gave significant glances a lot, and then what? We're, we're watching different shows, Brian. Maybe so. What are you talking maybe about? so. Like, 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 huh. we could talk about this, but <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I personally felt a lot, a lot was told to us about the nature of reality, and a lot of questions were posed about the people that are vying for that and whether or not everybody is on the same side. Mm. Uh, uh, there, 
Yeah. I, 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 they, they certainly doubled down on all of the questions that were already kind of simmering. And then they said the questions out loud, but I felt like we got scant number of answers. And uh, uh, I, I don't know. I okay. feel, I feel so like we, we, got, we, got, we, got, we got a very big answer <laughs> at, at, you at know, about end. halfway through, yeah, and then right. we got a, a gigantic game-changing answer at the end. Uh, okay, a game-confirming answer at the end. <laughs> it's only episode three. I, mean, I know. I know. Oh, I know. It changes. Know. We didn't know that the yeah. thing that, that the yeah, final we... shot, we didn't know that could happen. Okay. Uh, it, 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 it was, confirmed the type of thing. Exactly. It confirmed the suspicions okay. that, yes, correct. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 there was a bunch of different ways I thought it could have gone. Titanic sunk. Titanic <laughs> sunk, guys. Movie sucks. I was very, I it sinks. It sucks. I was very glad that the pregnancy thing was just like kind of a one episode thing. Cause I was, I, part of me was like, this is going to be the rest of, could, this could possibly be the rest of, the whatever series. the season is yeah um, i i, I, I thought it was I'm fun and able, hijinks i think yeah i think from the first episode i thought i had a pretty good idea what's going on and everything about this is confirmed like yep and i'm loving it i'm like loving the reveal of the characters it's like see that roller coaster it goes up and then it goes down oh why do i need to do it no because i get to go watch the characters and be part of it and here i'm like i'm watching their world it's what make for me it's like what makes a movie repeatable do I enjoy the path of the characters and like watching the characters on this journey as their reality starts to realize around them? I'm loving it. I'm just loving. And then the way they're hitting each aping that style of that decade. And then the way they're able to like also move the story forward. Now they've only got like three more episodes left. So we'll see oh, where is it that goes. It? I is thought it, it was is nine. Just a six like, episode is, thing. Is it nine? Is, uh, I, I mean, believe I it's I'm wrong. It looks like it's nine here. On... WandaVision was actually in 92. And, uh, <laughs> and then the final episodes were in 93. Yeah, I, I think because we're covering it on Court Killers. I think Tom mentioned that it's eight episodes and something titled an epilogue. Um, whatever that is. Uh, okay, so. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I, I, uh, I enjoy the fact that it seems to be speeding up. That's why I liked the first episode more because the first episode, I, I understood why they had to launch with episodes one and two. Because if it was just episode one, I feel like people would have gotten frustrated with like, what is this show? Um, but with, between episodes one and two, where you see things kind of getting, uh, uh, you know, ratcheted up, the fact that by episode three, we're already at a point where things are starting to rip and tear, I was very happy with. I'm like, okay, this show has a purpose and it has the confidence to be able to do the first episode in a way that was very like, no, we're going to bury ourselves in our premise and we're going to give you a little wink and a nod to how weird this is, but no, we're get wrecked. It's bewitched. <laughs> so, you know, uh, uh, that's going to be a part of this and, and the, the odd stuff will get bigger as our story gets bigger. Uh, I like I said I'm loving it. So that that was my. By the way, my other pick is if you got HBO, HBO Max. Uh, I tried to get into it when it first came out on HBO, and I couldn't get into it. And then now I'm like, well, let me dive into it because there are two seasons out, and that is His Dark Materials, the Golden Compass series. Oh, do you like it? I'm enjoying it. It's not. It's got great production values. Um, it has got some good performances in there. Uh, it is not, I, it's like the same thing as my issues with like the first series, the first few episodes of trying to get into it. Like it just didn't feel big in the way that it should. It kind of dials down once you get bigger and whatnot, but I'm still enjoying it. Uh, and we got, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda is in it. And so he's, he plays a very good character and I've never really, I haven't even seen Hamilton, but I'm like, Oh, this guy's great. Who is he? <laughs> and, and, oh, oh. That guy. I'm like, no, I'm like, that looks like Lin-Manuel Miranda. Oh, it is. And so he plays a very good character in it. So I would say if you've got HBO, I think that's worth checking out. I, I don't know. Are they going to do a season three? But it was like a co-production, you know, so it wasn't really a big hit for HBO, but it was because BBC One was the primary producer. So I don't know if they're doing a season three, hmm. um, but 
I'm almost at the end of season one. I'm enjoying it, but I'm not going to say cool. like, oh, put this at the top of your list. It does look like it has a third final season ordered. That's good. <laughs> yep, cool. So that'll be cool. So they they cover like, because the first part was like your first few episodes, you're watching the same stuff in the movie. And that was driving me nuts was like, yeah, I saw this movie. I saw this movie. Yeah. And it was okay. It wasn't great. And then, then it's once it gets past there into its own space, then it gets kind of a bit more interesting. Nice. Gentlemen, it's been weird. Alrighty, man. <laughs> All righty. All right. right. I got to use the bathroom. Sure. I'll be right back. Sure, sure, sure. All righty. We'll get ready for after things here in a bit. Brian, you need to take a break too? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, coming up a little later today, Court Killers. We're going to have uh, Nicole Lee back on. I'm sure we're going to talk about all of uh, the hot news happening in the entertainment industry, including uh, the WWE Network moving over to Peacock in the U.S. Be, uh, probably be up there somewhere. Um, what else? Was there another big thing? There's some big things happening. Big thing. Big, it feels like the a lot of things happened over the past week in terms of uh, uh, TV and movie news. Okay. Oh, AMC. AMC raised some money, but there's still no, God, not going to be any movies. Um, yeah, so that'll be coming up at about 6 central. I don't know if the guys are going to do happy hour or not. Um, maybe. It might kind of depend on how long we go with after things, but uh, uh, keep an eye out for that. Now that we finished, we did finish the Modern Rogue um, shooting bubble last week on Friday. Um, and I know that was a big, uh, that was kind of in the way a little bit with Happy Hour, just the way we had to schedule at this time. Uh, and then what else? What else? Uh, next week, next week I'm going to be announcing all the details, the schedule and stuff for the uh, upcoming Marbles League. I think, we fin I think we finalized a name and did some work on a logo. If you're in the Discord, nightattack.tv slash Discord, there's a Marbles channel there where I've been posting sneak peeks and updates, but uh, our first our first night's going to be fun. Our first night's going to be really fun. I still need to hit up a friend of ours who is going to be uh, helping out with some of that, but that's going to be fun. Uh, and so I'm building out video graphics and making templates so that Next week we can do, or the the second week we can have highlights and stuff. Um, still trying to work out the stats and 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 all of the different broadcast things. And I'm, I can tell I'm pushing. I can tell I'm pushing my computer just to its limits. I, I'm running on a 980 uh, Nvidia 980, and um, I'm definitely not going to buy a 30 a, th a 30 series graphics card. It's just not. They're just not in stock, and they're way expensive. I bought a I bought a PlayStation this year, not a not the not that. But if I could get a if I could find like a 2080 or like a 1080 Ti or something, uh, just to just to just to goose it up a little bit. What are you What are you looking for? Uh, just maybe, uh, a possibly a, a new graphics card. Not a not a top of the line one, but something to help with some of the. I'm I'm working on the marble stuff and. Ah, yeah, and, and I'm stressing. I'm stressing my computer a little bit. Just uh, all these little assets around. Are you doing? Uh, you doing a crowdfunding thing on the stream? I know that's a that's a that's a popular thing. You know, um, uh, no. chip in, chip in a, a buck for we'll a, a buck for a graphics card thing. Uh, probably not. Not this first seat. Not probably not this first round. Maybe in the second round. I think right now it's just let's see what we can do with everything we got. And get a sense of what that looks like after. I think you weeks. should. Never too early to put a little net. We got a, a tip jar. In we, the... do, we do have a tip jar. We have a little tip. So then, then just brand it. Just brand the brand the tip jar with a purpose. Mm -hmm. New graphics card for a tip jar. If you already have it, then then literally just have a reason, uh, a reason to to tip. Uh, so it's yeah. storytelling, Bryce. <laughs> storytelling. Already, telling a lot of stories. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, 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 that's one of, one of other many things I still need to finish up. I need to get in touch with a friend about some voiceovers. I need to do more nice. more graphics and stuff. So, um, oh. all sorts of stuff going on. How are you doing, Justin? 
busy. Pretty good. Seems, uh, seems like you're, you're keeping busy. I'm sure. I, you know, it's so funny. I like I, I spell out my entire day every morning, and then I still forget stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, uh, literally, I was like scrambling. I'm like, man, I when I just know whenever I think, man, I. A lot of time I got today. I'm like, I am assuredly forgetting about something. Um, so yeah, I forgot about my RT hit this morning. Uh, 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 it, there is something satisfying in just knowing that my incompetence requires somebody in Moscow to uh, uh, make a panicked <laughs> phone call every once in a while. That like, hello, this is Moscow. This is international. Uh, is it really? We are, trying, like... we are trying to call you on Skype. Yes. No, they, that's exactly oh, how they that's... sound. Wow. Um, and and God bless them. I don't even know how much that pays. How much it pays to corral my dumbass <laughs> from <laughs> Oakland as I'm like, as I'm, as I'm like, oh, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe I can get another walkabout round in. And like, meanwhile, <laughs> people are freaking out because I'm not there to talk about the impeachment articles. Mm -mm -mm uh man that's cool that's that's certainly an interesting uh, but yeah little, no between that side. and then uh going through the uh uh the 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 other part-time job of uh trying to buy a house so we are all right um, getting all of our stuff together to pre-qualify i had to actually put together a profit and loss statement for my business over the weekend mm, harumph. uh which is yeah it's like, <laughs> I'll tell you, 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 you want to know what QuickBooks doesn't know how to qualify or doesn't have any kind of easy way to let you know what, what things are. I'm going to guess people just give you money randomly <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's like, is that a sale? Is the All PayPal right. well, tip jar it, button? <laughs> yeah. What if I'm saying? selling, what am I selling? Nothing. Nothing. Like people are lit. Is it a bribe? We don't know QuickBooks. It's the internet. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I can't explain to you how it works. I just know that my PayPal gets that's, filled. That's still a thing on PayPal. I've seen where, you know, people who take commissions, they're like, Hey, you need to pay me in this very specific set of non-default options in PayPal. So it doesn't ask me for a tracking number. And then yeah. it thinks I didn't send you anything because it's a digital delivery digital 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 Man. um but yeah that and i installed a bidet Ooh. we had to nice. we had to get uh we had to get uh, uh oh you finally got one for your your crazy school toilet yes because we had to get our sink shut off valves replaced by the building so that had to happen last week. And then uh, I I had to go to the Home Depot preparing myself for home ownership. I had to go to the Home Depot and just find parts that I needed. And I did. And I installed <laughs> a bidet. So look at that. I went to Home Depot yeah. to install a bidet. I have I've bridged both of our political worlds. <laughs> AMA. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard out at 10, excuse me, at one o'clock. So uh, let's go. Ready, ready. Is that in 15 minutes? 13. 13 by my clock. 13 oh, minutes. Okay. Let's uh, go. All right. I will catch you in for after things in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. So, gentlemen, we are in a very exciting point right now. I mean, uh, it's it's we get to be up front and up close to the launch of a new venture, <laughs> a which we talked about pandemic. before. Uh, no, uh, the vaccine for a global pandemic. It's, it's, no. The Oculus Quest Two. No. A space elevator. Space elevator. Okay, no. good answer. Good answer. It Goblins. Could be. It, could, Spiders? it could lead to that. Spiders? No. Mm. Goblins? No. God, why do I bother? <laughs> um, I'm talking about the update from Bryce about his whole Marvel thing. Oh, hey! oh yeah. Where are we at? Last time we were talking about this, it was all about uh, 
Guys, marbles. They roll downhill. <laughs> what if I added databases? Uh -huh. Don't answer yet. Hold on. I'm going to spend a week making databases. Marbles, I'm eh? Back. <laughs> what well, about square marbles, Bryce? Did you think about that? Uh, okay, the also they actually do let you do square. about marbles. We'll call it Marble Comics. Just blue sky and blue sky and. So the big the big changes over last week are uh, I'm pretty much set with the database stuff. So I actually haven't had to mess right, wait, too wait, much with. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Should I reset? Give the thirty second pitch to people who never heard about this and what this is. Sure. Yeah. Uh, there's a video game on Twitch where it simulates marble races and you get a marble with your name on it. And I'm doing a, uh, I'm building stuff on top of that. So we're keeping our own points, and we're going to give out awards, and and uh, we've got trophy, well not virtual trophies and stuff. Um, and so I'm I'm getting that all set up to launch in about two weeks or so. I think I did settle on a name. I know last time naming and branding was a was a was a thing. So I've decided on uh, the League of Fun Games or LFG. Uh, yeah. That's good. That's good. Surpri surprisingly, not used uh, uh, acronym as much as you would think, uh, given um, the many things that LFG can stand for. Um, and uh, and right now it is uh, getting all of the assets and the graphics and the broadcast stuff set up. And so over at some point in about a week from now, I'll probably do. Uh, a test of like, okay, what does it look like to actually do a rundown of this? How many, uh, you know, how many races will probably be in about an hour or an hour and a half? And what little assets do I need to build? What what things do I need to do to plug in so that there's always something happening? Um, or and so that I can I can take two minutes while a video plays as a break or something. Um, and so it's uh, it's in that finishing phase right now. I still have to build the website, or I have a website, but I've got to build it out i've got to publish all the tables and and and, and all that stuff uh but i i'm i'm feeling very good i feel like for the past few weeks i felt like okay if i needed to start right now i could and it would be pretty good um which is good good gravy space to be in have you so let's unpack uh, uh, oh, Bryce, uh, uh, I, I, quick question uh, have, have you reached out and chit chatted with the folks who made the marbles game and and um I, I know that many magicians will base an idea based on somebody else's uh, previous work. And oftentimes mm -hmm. they're afraid to reach out to the first person because the first person might say, I do or don't approve of this or you should or shouldn't do it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, almost universally good things happen when you just hit them up straight like, hey, man, really like your one thing, want to do this other thing with it. How can we work on this together and then at right. the very least you walk away with with their explicit blessing on that has have, have, is there any reason to have that kind of discussion with with the folks who made the engine that runs this um there there, there would be in terms of like uh there, there are I'm, I'm not worried about the layer that i'm putting on top of the game i think in, intellectually i'm not too too afraid of it because the whole point of it is that you stream this game anyway i think just counting more numbers outside of it is, is not a big deal but i i do think that there are functional things about the game that i think would be helpful from my perspective of like you know uh valken in in our discord uh, i was i did a live stream of trying to solve different coding problems and uh he was like memory dumping the game to see if he could pull data out of the game while it happened to help ease some things and he turned out he could not and uh and and so i i think in terms of that in terms of like hey it would be very helpful if this if this data could be available or these bits of the game could be accessible easily um and and then you know they uh the the pixel by pixel studios is who makes it they already have a like they've got a shop and a whole monetization scheme with the game and they do like team up with or I, I don't know how it works, but they have like streamers who play their game a lot, uh, have skins, have an, have their own skin in the game, and people can buy the skin and put it on their marble. Um, but I think that I think that's more of like we would need to be doing it regularly. We would kind of need more some of this under our belt to get to I that would, point. I, I feel like you know I, I I would I would initiate contact. Yeah, because I I, I think that you've streamed it enough that you can say i really like this platform and now i'm actively taking steps to build a bigger brand on top of it or that incorporates it um i i think 
as creators, we think that threshold is a lot higher than it often is to other people, especially people like game studios and stuff like that. Um, I, I wouldn't suspect that they're batting away dozens of compliments per day, right? They, they, they might be, be dealing with people who have issues with the game or questions with the game or whatever. But if you just say like, Hey, I'm, I'm just making contact and maybe I would love to see where I could be in the channel to get a skin down the road. I think you'd probably get a, a response back. And that way, the next time that you hit people up and say like, Hey, look at this, here's the branding. Like yeah. you're a known quantity. Yeah. I, I think that's, I think that that's I would double down advice, on that yeah. too. Yeah. Cause like, I know like with open AI, you know, we have our API and we look for who are the most active users and people we want to work with it because they give us a lot of signal and it's helpful. And it's also internally, Hey, look at this person's doing here. This is a great example. Sometimes we have features where we go to them first and say, Hey, do you want to test this thing out? We'd love your input on it. Hmm. And because you're you're doing what they want, you're building a thing. Hey, you got to get got a great thing. I'm building a system around it. So I would, and also, you know, you've you've got some weight to you because what you do here, you know, you're 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 a professional broadcaster with an in part of a professional broadcast network. I think I don't think it would hurt. Famous yeah. last words. Yeah, you know, I I I hadn't considered it, but I I think that's all. I think those are all very good. Um, at least to just see. What what you know whether it's about skins or or uh, any any of that stuff yeah I think I think that's a definitely an easy thing I can do uh, uh, before launch yeah um yeah. and then in terms of other uh, other updates I mean it's 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 just technical stuff and finishing stuff right now I think um you know trying to get into a place where I can do kind of a faux dress rehearsal before the big day and then uh, only because uh. You know, we 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 say on the show a lot, like, "Hey, just you got to do something a lot, and you'll figure it out over time." And I kind of need a little bit of that to be happening before the first big day, because that big day is going to be on a big day, and it's, we've got extra special um, uh, stuff, and and we got a little guest thing in the middle of it, and all. Um, and uh, uh, that would be a time when I especially don't want to be just sweating buckets of like, okay, this doesn't work. That doesn't work. What's going on here? Would, would it be possible for you to just reach out and get 10 beta testers and do a full dress rehearsal of every phase through the whole thing? I can do it completely offline. You can, you can simulate f uh, f even fake racers. So yeah. I would be able to, to do well, that. Uh, fa fake racers will rarely surprise you with trying to break the game in a way that real racers might, um, which sure. you know like like um um uh j just in general like uh like i, I don't know <laughs> when when you invite a group of people to try to break a game you find some creative people who really try to break a game sure. yeah i mean i think that's in the cards as well i mean we've got enough time between now and then to do a secret stream and just and see see you know make sure all the online stuff the stuff that connects into the chat work as well um but also like it, it's twofold right like the, that human interaction element with the chat and the live it, it viewing experience and uh on on the uh client side of like okay i have like all of these assets that need to run i just need to know that i can run the game and do races and also do this and also do this and also do this so kind of both of those things need to happen um uh but yeah i i think uh, i think that's definitely something uh, I need to do. <laughs> it it's yeah. it's interesting to watch this because you know, Bryce, you see this from the inside out. You at both sides. You've seen so much of this and you're like, okay, I need to figure out how to manage the dead time. I need to think of graphics for this. I need to think things that you know I never would even thought about in the beginning of like how do you manage all this? And you're trying to figure out how to produce a full event yeah. from a one person point of view too, which I think is kind of fascinating to see how you're engineering <laughs> the entire one man show. Yeah. It's um, it's I, I'll certainly have a lot to talk about after it's done because I've got like a rundown now of things that like oh I might do this, I might throw to this, but it's I I have to imagine that it's very similar to like putting on like an NFL show of like okay, we're going to have these packages and these graphics kind of ready ahead of time, but you also have to play it by ear because there's so much variability of what the game is, the timing and things. 
So, um, so when when is when is launch day? When are you gonna get started? Um, well, exclusive. I guess I can exclusive it here a little bit. Uh -oh. So, uh, I'm gonna announce the full schedule on uh, February 1st, but the first game will be uh, the evening of February 7th, immediately after the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. fun! Yeah. Way to compare yourself to the big guy. <laughs> just just go right after that, right for the jugular. Uh, suggestion. And it's an obvious one that if I asked you to make a suggestion, you would say this, and maybe you've, you thought about this, but also might be instructive to our other to our listeners out there is that Please. the sooner you can have a website in an email capture form, mm -hmm. the better. And it's just, you know, that's, we always talk about like, I get emails from people who are like, I know you guys talked about on weird things or after things about starting to do an email list. And I thought about, it, I didn't do it. Now I'm out there trying to launch a book or launch a thing. And man, I wished I'd done, I've got this. I wished I'd done it earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, what advice do you have? I'm like, I don't know. Listen to our advice the first time. The thing we say 10 times, <laughs> like do that. But um, and the sooner you capture, the better. Uh, de yeah. Definitely had a friend recently say, you know, hey, what advice do you have? I'm about to launch a thing. And I said, uh, one of the three things I said was, uh, you're looking at this thing, assuming, I don't even know if this is going to go anywhere, if it's going to be anything. Um, if it does go somewhere, you will wish that you started collecting emails on day one. Here's your one chance to take that path so that future you thanks past you. Yeah. Like I performed for 25 people at the hideout theater. I passed around an email list and those are still in that, that 150,000 email list now. Yeah. That's definitely, you know, part of this is that I, there is a website component to it where people can check in on their stats and stuff. And definitely having a new mailing list attached to that um, is going to be uh, a, 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 a is going to be part of it um, for sure. So, uh, but it is it is good to point out because it was a thing where I was like, well, you know, how important is in terms of priorities? Where does that rank? But I think it's also something where I mean, I've got a Mailchimp account, sub Substack yeah. accounts are free. It, the Squarespace yes. integrations are very easy. At it's it's no it's like no, it made no yeah, work to put one, that in there. Number one, go with uh, well. I don't know. I don't know for you. You may, may, maybe Mailchimp uh, uh, works better. But I've actually uh, not liked get, having used Mailchimp for the video games email list. Like I think it's fine. But what I what I'm doing what I was doing at that is something Substack is formatted for for writing. Substack stuff. is so much better at text that's yeah. not about selling stuff like like mailchimp is best in class for generating sales Seeds, for yeah. things like uh substack is better for writing that being said bryce mm. if you take nothing else out of this conversation you need to be pushing people to subscribe to your email so they can get the first look at the schedule oh that's the first thing that you do okay is, Get on right now. That will go out exclusively to email people before we say it on the stream, before we say it anywhere. You will know uh, that, uh, you know, you will know what the schedule is going to be before anybody. So now you will know immediately that anybody who signs up to your, your email list now mm -hmm. and, and let it be dozens, those are the hardest core people. Those will... They will take you into the sun. Like those are your apostles and you are marbles, Jesus. That's uh, a really good idea. I had not even considered uh, putting that information, you know, up first on an email list. I think that's, re that's really smart. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to Anything gonna do that. that, anything that will, uh, that immediately identifies people that are just the most into you. And I'll bet you that half the people won't even necessarily be like super jacked about marbles. They'll just be jacked about Bryce doing more Bryce stuff. Mm. Like, uh, uh, and that's perfect because now you can, you can share with them this entire process and they will love it yeah. every inch of it. I think, and I think that's something that I ought to be able to do, if not tonight, by tomorrow. So I can tell people, hey, the website's open. Go sign yeah. up on the email list at the URL and, uh, you'll get to see, you know, the schedule and stuff. I, I think that's a that's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I, I and yeah, in terms of uh, updates, I, I think there's not much much else. It's been good. We I did cr I created a, a channel in our Night Attack Discord for the Marvel stuff, and it's been really good seeing everybody's interactions and using that as a place to kind of show people stuff ahead of time. We workshopped the title um, all this past week, pretty much since Monday, um, and uh, uh, it's been great. So uh, and that's. Uh, uh, directly because of last week's after thing. So, so thanks guys. Dude, that's great. And keep in mind when you encourage people to get on the email list, uh, mm -hmm. there may be a temptation because you're in the nascent period of whatever this phase will be. Um, that whether or not this thing takes off or the next thing takes off or the fourth or fifth thing from now takes off, uh, you will always, uh, the people who sign up now are going to be there at the earliest steps of a very grand, very long, lifelong journey. And so th there's no need to apologize or say, help me out because I'm just getting started. None of that language. Oh, sure. Just, just say, just say, hey, man, it is starting. What is it? Find out. Sign up on the list. You know? It's LFG. That's right. That's mm -hmm. what it is. It's And and I mean the curse word acronym, <laughs> uh, acronym for it. That's what, I mean, like, just go, man. Yeah. Just you got it uh, uh, collect the people and and that way every time that you're every time you go live you have a reason to send out an email to let people know what the schedule is that day what the schedule is going forward standings mm -hmm. like those are things that are prop that that are better written down yeah like those are actually like pro probably properly categorized in email you're not you're not shoehorning that in there right i mean it um but between like i think and i think an email list is is uh, a great a, a great place for that information because there is like a page on the website that'll be updates or recaps or etc cetera, etc cetera. um but i think especially a direct to inbox uh, uh email component just you know having all of that same information uh direct to people i think is 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 a is a good avenue to go as well yeah um yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, uh, I like LFG. Great. It's, it's, isn't it fun? I I was really noodling on it for a long time, and I was really surprised that not too too many other things are using LFG, despite like the long history of it, even as looking for group uh, back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that webcomic I mean, is there, still going. There was the Mexican League Fantasticos games. Uh, oh, or, really? As they refer to it, El Fantasticos games. <laughs> Uh, LFG, yeah. Uh, is that I, wait, is that soccer? I, I think, I think oh, okay. he's just doing a bit. Doing a bit. He's just being just a little L, bit of a cheeky, a cheeky LFG. fun. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Little, little fun guy. A little fun guy. Little, little, oh, that's a little fun guy right there. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, alrighty. Well, uh, Andrew had a jet, um, but I think. Uh, we, uh, anything you guys want to share or should we, uh, should we wrap it up here? Uh, I think we could wrap it up outside of to say, uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm being judicious in trying to decide what kind of, uh, quest two games to get into. I guess there's mm. a, uh, there's a, a new battle Royale something or other that, uh, seems to be fun. So Ooh. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't I need, know I, I need, I need a older. hover junkers replacement. That was the game that I played a ton in Vive mm. and I would like. Uh, uh, an oculus version that was the one where you were on like uh like a little borderlands hover hover platform yeah, and you and would you shoot were, and, at other platform people yeah and it was bit, it, well, it wasn't a battle royale in that it was elimination but it was more it like was a like death teams. match yeah 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 death match kind of thing hmm. that would be cool yeah do they have like a laser tag game like i think I, I think it would be very funny to do like a VR. Maybe Rec Room has something like that where it's like kind of like the janky, like real life laser tag, but with like actual lasers or something. To be fair, I think a version of like a team tower defense thing would be really good where you were like switching between positions, either advancing or defending constantly and so retreating you had... as the hordes are so, coming. In. So it's sort of like orcs must die in, in VR group base yeah, or something. But, but you would have basically you could zap between positions and in in those positions you would have movement to you know to do stuff but i don't know that that and my like literally just port a 16-bit rpg that i can play with my friends and and make it all in 16-bit and have us 
just play and talk to each other and and just do turn based combat with enemies like that would be just oh my so god dope. vr so dope. vr civilization would be Ugh. would be deadly it, it, that would be yeah deadly. i was about to say it'd be <laughs> the end of my life i would blink and then suddenly i'd be 90 i uh i bought civ what is anyone civ 6 civ 6 i think is the latest on on the playstation uh a while ago i started up one day and i looked around and it was 4 a.m time warp <laughs> it's all it those so... turn-based strategies man <laughs> yeah yeah well, uh, if you guys have suggestions for VR games, why don't you send them in? Uh, Nashcom at gmail.com. Put after things on the subject line. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us here today. Uh, for Brian, Justin, Andrew, I'm Bryce. And it's been after. Yep. Pew. There we go. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here today on, on uh, Weird. Oops, I didn't turn the after things graphic on. Oh, well. Uh, thank you for joining us here. Weird things after things. We will be back. Uh, we'll certainly be back for Cord Killers in about three hours. Are you guys... Should I even ask? Uh, oh, uh, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, we, we are happy hour. Happy hour is on pause right. for, uh, for 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 for, for that, greater good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Greater uh, there good. we go. That, that's, there that's, go uh, uh, no, we're not doing that frivolously. Like, there's a very good reason. Think of whatever the best reason you could think of that we would ever press pause on happy hour, and realize that it's slightly better. Uh, and then also realize that I'm trying to buy a fucking house. There's so, that too. <laughs> uh, uh, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot going on yeah. right now. Um, and so, look, we're going to starve the market a little. Yeah. The market's <laughs> going to be starved look, a little. Man, we weren't feeling very appreciated. Let's just say oh. it. You guys no, weren't that. happy it enough during the happy uh, hour. Cut we need it, you to cut be it, happy. Cut it. Fucking cut it. Good no. <laughs> we're fighting because of you. <laughs> we're not fighting because of... Nicole on Cord Killer later tonight. Bye.